Welcome to the Leadership Decoded Podcast. Here, we provide you actionable tactics and practical techniques to lead at your very best at work and in your everyday life. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey, a former U.S. Army officer and combat veteran, a current team and leadership development workshop facilitator, and executive education adjunct professor. We put out the call, you sent in your answers. This week, we have an Ask Me Anything Leadership Q&A. We're going to get into self-care practices and how to develop team empowerment. Let's dive in. This episode is brought to you by Sweat Tent, the industry leader of the portable at-home wood-burning sauna. Being a leader can be stressful. That's why I've been a sauna user for many years. Did you know that consistent sauna usage three to four times a week not only relieves stress and improves sleep, but it also enhances your physical well-being and fosters mental resilience and cognitive clarity to be a better leader. And you no longer have to go to a crowded gym or buy one of those expensive and bulky at-home setups to experience the benefits of a sauna. Sweat Tent is the most portable and affordable at-home sauna on the market. The setup takes minutes and can reach 200 degrees in under 30 minutes. Harness the power of the Sweat Tent sauna to lead with clarity and poise. Sweat out stress, ignite creativity, and emerge a more focused leader. All Leadership Decoded listeners will receive $100 off when you use code LEAD100. Visit SweatTent.com today to get $100 off your purchase with code LEAD100 at checkout. Again, that's SweatTent.com to get $100 off with code LEAD100. SweatTent, improving your ability to lead at work and in your everyday life. This episode is brought to you by CNG Tutoring. Founded by Janelle and Chris Seaton, CNG Tutoring is Northeastern Pennsylvania's leading tutoring service. Our experienced state certified tutors provide personalized one on one sessions tailored to each student's unique learning style. From math and science to reading, writing, and even Spanish, we cover it all. We also offer top-notch SAT prep designed to help students sharpen the skills they need to achieve their goals on the SAT. Join the countless families who trust CNG Tutoring with award-winning educators and a five-star parent rating. We offer in-person and virtual tutoring using 21st century learning techniques. Visit cngtutoring.com today and start your child's journey to academic excellence. CNG Tutoring. Ignite your mind. This episode is brought to you by Fit AF. As a leadership coach, I understand the importance of fueling both body and the mind. Balancing coaching sessions, workshops, and personal development can be demanding, and that's where Fit AF steps in. Fit AF offers an ever-changing menu crafted by top chefs and nutrition experts to ensure you're getting the best quality meals. Their diverse selection caters to various dietary preferences and needs, including keto, paleo, vegetarian, vegan, gluten-free, and more. As a valued listener, enjoy an exclusive offer. Get 20% off your first order of seven meals or more by using code LEADER at checkout at fitafnutrition.com. Again, that's code LEADER for 20% off your first order of seven meals or more at fitafnutrition.com. Our first question comes to us from Dave G. Dave asked, how often do you practice self-care at work? I'm trying to build my own self-care routine and would appreciate any tips you can share. Dave, I appreciate that question. It's taken me years to really understand and hone in self-care and what self-care looks like in the work environment throughout your day. What I found was people work long days. Some, Some of you out there are grinding 10, 12 hour days. You have to have a routine in place in your day in order to pause for the cause, step back, reset, reassess, and take care of yourselves. What I found was building these routines, building rituals throughout my day are on the preventive preventative side of self-care. It's on the proactive side of self-care. So let me start with that. When we think about uh, self-care routines for me, at least three times a day, I'm doing some form of self-care. That can be a, a morning ritual prior to arriving to work or arriving at work. My morning ritual for me prior to arriving is get up, work out, and I smell the coffee roasting. I set my pot up the night before, I smell coffee roasting, it helps get me up, it helps get me awake, I am ready for the day. And I enjoy the ritual of pouring it into my cup, putting on my tunes as I enter my car, and popping the the travel mug open so I can keep that aroma going as I drive into work. I know it's the small things in life, but that really sets me up for feeling good and feeling ready to take on my day. So it's that confidence boost, that form of self-care. Throughout my day, what I'll do is I will block time prior to a big meeting, prior to a big presentation, and I'll block time after, five, 10 minutes. My pre 
routine is to visualize a positive outcome. I give myself space to visualize positivity. I give myself space to visualize how I'm going to overcome an obstacle that may come up. And I give myself space to perform box breathing. All three of these are generating and sending out positivity into the world and helping ground me to the present. The box breathing helps lower my blood pressure, which helps me speak at a, at a better pace. It helps me take on a better tone and it helps me be able to adapt to any curveballs I might get thrown in the meeting. My post presentation or my post uh, meeting or, or difficult conversation routine is all about clearing my head and shedding what happened, positive or negative. I give myself five to 10 minutes to get outside, grab some fresh air, go for a walk and reset myself. I do this because throughout the day, there's so many different pivots I have to make. I can't take something that may or take the chance of something that happened poorly over here, impacting what I have to do next. So that five minute block after is for me to reset so I can lead at my best, give my best to my team that's relying on me in a different topic, in a different setting, in a different context than what happened previously in the day. I take time to get outside, vitamin air or vitamin D, fresh air in my lungs. So I'm getting oxygen, I'm getting vitamin D, I'm getting in nature, and I'm not talking to anybody. I have a couple spots around where I work that are very quiet and they surround me with trees, they surround me with breeze, I can hear birds chirp. If I'm lucky, I see, I see a couple deer or fox run through and that really helps bring me back down from whatever may have, may have happened, either celebrating the win or resetting myself from the, you know, from the negative and figuring out how I'm gonna move forward. Um, different things I do throughout my day as well. So I, I told you, I go for walks. I take two or three minutes to do box breathing. I do that at least twice a day at work. Uh, I'm intentional about scheduling coffee chats with people. Every now and again, when I feel myself being disconnected or I feel myself, uh, you know, maybe a little bit too much distance between people, I want to invite them in or ask them, hey, I, ha let's, I haven't caught up with you in a while. Let's grab a cup of coffee, bottle of water, and let's just chat about life. How are you? What are you up to? Those type things. So what that's doing for me in the form of self-care is building connection to people, Right. And it's helping me maintain positive relationships and being genuine about those that are, that are uh, around me and those I surround myself with. So when we think about forms of self-care, cognitive reset, combining these don't take up much time. Five-minute walk, three-minute box breathing, that's eight minutes, three times a day, 24 minutes of self-care can help you lower your stress, lower your blood pressure, take on more throughout your day so that you can serve your team and lead at your best. So Dave, I hope that answered your question. Tips about self-care at work. You know, just to recap, setting boundaries, blocking your time, making best use of your time to in be intentional about space to have a morning ritual, have a midday ritual, have an end of day ritual, pre and post uh, meeting, pre and post conflict, whatever it may be doesn't doesn't take much to uh, when it accumulates but it'll pay you dividends in the on the backside. Our second question comes to us from Becca M. Becca asked, uh, I'm recently I'm a recently promoted team leader. I have more demands on my time now than ever before. How can I empower my team to take on more so I can focus on leading? Becca, thank you so much for sending this in. I tell you this is a common uh, issue that comes up for newly promoted leaders or leaders that are taking over new teams. You have the self-imposed um, perspective that you need to know everything and be everything and be the expert on everything all from day one. And that is clearly not true. That is, that is a misconception that's out there and that you are promoted based on your potential. You're promoted based on your ability to lead others. And that's what you need to do is lead others. You don't need to be a uh, a super individual contributor, you need to be able to lead others so that they can have the opportunities to take more on, to, to, to share some of that responsibility of those teams. So it's a great question. I'm glad you're thinking uh, this way already as a newly promoted leader of being able to empower your team. When it comes to empowering your team, uh, research shows that it, it, it actually, when you empower your team, it will increase their belief in their abilities. 
it'll increase your team's ability to adapt to changing situations and circumstances. And it'll also lead to increased performance. So you, by not taking everything on yourself, by empowering your team, you're actually giving them opportunity to learn, to grow, to challenge themselves, and to become better performers. So when you think about what team empowerment is, it can be broke down into a couple of different facets. One, as a team leader, to start that road towards team empowerment, take time to explain the why. Tie your team to the meaningfulness of their work, the bigger picture, and where they fit in. So when you think about uh, your team and, and the purpose of your organization, what's that bigger level purpose? And I'll go back to, to, to NASA with the space race. Their purpose was to put somebody on the uh, moon and return them safely home before the end of the 60s, by 1969. It didn't matter if you were a janitor, an engineer, an administrative assistant, you were all working towards the same purpose and all had and felt the same meaningfulness of your work. Tie your team to the bigger picture is a first step to making them feel and understand empowered. Share with your team your belief in them. Share with them. Use intentional positive language. Tell them that you believe they're capable of solving a problem on their own. Tell them that you believe they're capable of overcoming a challenge. Tell them that you believe they're capable of coming up with an innovative solution. And then give them the resources to do that. When they do, your team will astonish you with what they can come up with in a positive way. Make sure you recognize and reward the process that they went through to get there. So when you think about sharing your beliefs, what's the big objective? What's the big audacious goal you want your team to accomplish? And then how are you going to, to use supportive, positive, inspiring language to get them there? Another part of leading your team towards team empowerment is removing roadblocks. We have a lot of bureaucracy in bigger organizations. Smaller organizations, not so much, but mid-sized, bigger organizations, there's a lot of process. There's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of procedure that needs to be followed. All for, for good reason, for the most part. Um, but take a step back and think about where can you remove any roadblock that would foster a sense of powerlessness? If your team members come back and say, oh, that's above my pay grade. Is it? Oh, I can't do that. That's so-and-so's responsibility. Is it? Or how can we can influence that? Where can we, where can we niche in to uh, shift and change that outcome or influence a decision? Right? So think about any bureaucracy that you can shield them from or remove your team from to allow them to focus on the task at hand. This gives them space to perform. And when you couple, when you couple removing roadblocks with autonomy, now you've got another element of empowerment. Tying people to meaningful work, sharing and cultivating positive self-belief and positive team belief, removing roadblocks, and then giving them the space to execute the work how they see fit. This gives your team the ability to understand what your intent is, the left and right limits of where you want them to, to stay, and the space in between to have ownership, to take, to take responsibility and accountability of outcomes and process. Now your team is empowered. Now you can step back and focus on bigger picture items. So when you have uh, the opportunity to do this, it takes time to shift and change but it'll pay dividends. I'm telling you, you'll be able to step back when you lead with empowering behaviors. You're going to free yourself up to develop your team, to continue to refine the system that you put in place. And you're going to also help them by promoting a sense of purpose, a sense of self. And when your team feels that, boy, oh boy, when your team feels that, it's got a momentum building effect, like a snowball rolling downhill. Your team's going to step up more and more they're going to grow faster, they're going to perform higher, and they're going to feel good about it because you're empowering them to do so. So Becca, I hope that answered your question. Dave, thanks for sending yours in as well. I love the Ask Me Anything because it gives me the opportunity to share some uh, leadership insights, expertise, and experiences that I've had with you. So please keep sending in your questions. Keep sending in your leadership inquiries, and we'll keep answering them here on the show because we're here to serve. Thanks for tuning in to the Leadership Decoded podcast here in the Loop Internet Studio. If you like today's episode, send us a comment, 
send us a review, share it across all of our social media channels. Get the word out about Leadership Decoded so that you can be a part of helping others lead at their very best each and every day. If you're an organization interested in investing in your people to strengthen your team dynamics and invest in your future leaders, I want to work with you. I provide highly engaging, creativity-infused, hands-on learning experiences through developmental workshops for team members and leaders of all experience levels and all sizes. Connect with me on LinkedIn at Dr. William Ramey or email me here at will at onthestacks.com. I'm your host, Dr. Will Ramey, and I'll see you the next time you press play.